All right, there we go. Guess what, guys? I'm actually going to start doing some editing on my videos, okay? I just don't want to start doing editing and then later you're like, Ronnie, where's your intro? Because, like, I can um, flip-flop from, okay, today I have time to do editing to I don't have time to do editing. So, you know what I'll do? I'll wait till I finish up these projects. And um, once I finish all that up, I will do some freaking editing okay so like the darkness i'm channeling my inner witch today it's fall like okay it's already fall like it's been here we're not been here for too long but i am totally feeling the weather it is beautiful it's got a little crispness to the air but like the sun is really shine and shine bright the fudge sickles ronnie the sun is really bright and shining. <laughs> so I've been having a lot of fun just walking and relaxing in this beautiful weather. I'm not a fan of winter. So um, spring and fall are like my, I'm absolutely in love with them. I'm head over heels when it comes to summer, but spring and fall are like, yay. And not early spring, kind of like mid spring. Okay, so anyway, I wanna get to my video. I'm trying to work with this lighting here. <sighs> I've got some good natural light, but um, let me just work with it because it's about to go away. So, guys, are you ready for this, my gods and goddesses? I am going to give you an update on being an empath. Yeah, it's needed, okay? If you have not watched my first video on being an empath, I highly suggest that you do because I am not going to go over the very basics of being an empath, like the symptoms of being an empath, the traits of being an empath. I'm not going to go over that. We've already done that. Um, as much as I cannot stand a lot of my videos back then, I'm suggesting that you watch that one so you can get caught up to speed. Now, since making that video, years have passed, and I have begun to understand even more how um, challenging it is to be an empath. And I think a lot of times um, it is extremely sugar-coated. It's like, oh my God, you're going to feel the energy of everything around you. Sometimes it can be overwhelming, and that might sound completely realistic. But the truth of the matter is sometimes I feel like being an empath, forgive me for saying this, can be somewhat of a curse slash handicap. Um, it is something that you are born with. And unless you are truly an empath, you wouldn't understand me saying that. So I have discovered that there is a difference from being a, high, a highly sensitive person, HSP. I was about to say something else to um, being an empath. So an HSP is someone that is so sensitive that they are highly affected by, by the things that are happening in the environment, things that are happening to other people. Um, they just feel their emotions on a very intense level. It's everything so heavy for them. Um, and a lot of those traits with a highly sensitive person are very similar to an empath and I think a lot of people get kind of confused and they feel oh I'm super sensitive so that makes me an empath I want to really break down what I have found when all these years being an empath um, upon discovering that I was an empath and I found out I was an empath because I was really sick at one point uh, every time I would come home I just felt really sick very irritable you know mood swings shifted a lot and I would like go through this depression and it just seemed like every time I came home to the point where I thought, okay, maybe there's mold in my house. There's something going on. And I had went to the doctors. I had got a lot of blood work and everything was coming back like, you're fine. And I remember being really upset because I did not want to hear any longer that I was okay. I wanted somebody to just come out and say, this is what you're dying from. Because to me, I was dying from something. And I would have rather known something than to continue walk away thinking I am perfectly fine. Nobody has any reasoning behind why I'm feeling this way. And so um, I would like go to the God of the Internet, Google, and I would type in all my symptoms. Between Google and WebMD, I was like, oh my God, I have cancer. I have a tumor in my head. 
I have arthritis in my skull. Like, I just had every freaking thing. And I literally would go to the doctors, like, you need to test for this. And I think my doctor just was like, you're super hypochondriac, and I'm not doing that. And I would be like, no, you are doing it. So <laughs> I didn't come here and pay you for nothing. So I was getting tested nonstop, and it was very depressing. And so finally, I just prayed, and I said, God, please show me what's wrong with me. And I went home, and I went back to Google, as I normally did, and the same symptoms would always come up. And what I would do is I would tackle one thing at a time. Oh, this is what Google said I have. I'm making sure my doctors are checking for this. Only because everything was super, super intense. And I had no energy. I was sleeping a lot. Um, I was very irritable. I had mood swings like crazy. I was depressed. I was gaining weight. I was losing weight. It was like really intense. And so um, this time after praying, I came home, I typed in my symptoms and it said the traits of being an empath. And I was like, what was that? This is new. Where'd this come from? Never seen this. Google, you didn't tell me I was an empath. The hell is this shit? And when I read everything, I literally probably got to like the fourth trait and I called my mom. And I was like, there is something wrong with me. I knew it, but like, I just thought it was happening now. But the way that this is describing me, this is like who I am or something. Like, I had no idea what was going on. This was at the beginning of my awakening. So I was really like confused. So I said, well, I'm dying from being an empath. And my mom's like, well, what the hell is an empath? I was like, I'm telling you, like, I'm dying from it. And so we finally figured it out. And I said, well, there's a reason that this popped up because never before. And when I tell you I've typed into Google over 20 something times, easy, easy. I'm being nice saying that. Um, how, what my symptoms were, this had never popped up. Not until I prayed did this pop up. And it made more sense than anything I had ever discovered on Google or WebMD. So then I had to, I said, okay, so if this is what this is, what am I being affected by? Well, I was in a, in a relationship with someone that was going through a lot of stuff at that time. Things that I didn't even know. Things I was just totally not aware of. Probably because I was dealing with my, what I thought to be my own thing. And I didn't really take the time to focus on that. And when I figured out what my partner was going through, it was like, oh my God. When he would replay what he was going through emotionally and how it made him feel physically... Half of me was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Oh my God, like we need to get you some help. And then the other half of me was like, what the hell didn't you tell me this? This is your fault. I feel like this. Like, I'm just keeping it real. I was kind of angry, but then I kind of felt bad. So um, that is when I found out I was an empath and I had to really make some changes. So it has been from the beginning it's like okay you pick up on you're very sensitive you absorb other people's feelings thoughts emotions blah 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 blah, blah. and it's like okay this is cool well moving on with being an empath it just i never knew that it was as intense as it was spoken like no one ever told you that you will literally pick up on things from your neighbors no one ever told you that you constantly have to be shielding and protecting and cleansing not just yourself but your space and it might sound like I'm being very dramatic but being an empath is that it's very dramatic it's very intense no one broke down that the reason you are kind of like a loner and you love isolation is because you cannot actually handle all these energies. Nobody ever let you know that although you can do these grounding techniques and these shielding and these purifying techniques, you will still always be somewhat isolated because no matter how many things you do, you can't lessen the fact that you're an empath and you would literally have to do techniques all damn day. I don't know if there's certain levels of sensitivity when it comes to being an empath, but I will tell you, I, I love being out and about, but I think this is why I like being in the country because there's, I can feel it. There's more space and there's more um, space and freedom for my, like my spirit, my aura. It just, I'm picking up more of a mix of nature and people. Um, when I'm in this city, when I'm doing shopping, when I'm visiting friends, 
I can only do that for so long. And although I'll visit friends and I'm perfectly fine and I'm having a really good time, but let me say I go off to the bathroom or I go off on my own for a minute. My thoughts are everywhere. It's like, oh, you look fat. Oh, your hair needs done. Oh, this. Oh, is your husband cheating? I'm not even fucking married no more. What the hell is all this shit coming from? Like, it was crazy. It was like, oh my God. This is freaking intense. Like, this is sick. It's like, you can't turn off for like a second. No. You don't get the opportunity to turn off being an empath. It's no hug can turn it off. It is very intense. I remember my old place that I lived in, I lived in a townhouse. And so, literally, I could never, I could never buy a townhouse. I will never do that. I will never live in a townhouse or an apartment. I would rather live in a treehouse. I'm not, I cannot do that again. My really good friend lived next door, love her to death, shout out to Kristen. And then for the longest, the people next door, nobody lived there. They had already sold their um, townhouse. So at one point, when I was in the midst of being a vegan, I was craving steak, like obsessively. It wasn't even just meat, it was steak. I, I just had to have it. And it was day after day after day. And I was like, where is this coming from? Because I've been vegan for, at this point, it was months. Because you know, you guys know I eat with the seasons. So I'm like, where is this coming from? I normally have these cravings under control because my body's used to doing this seasonal. You know, and that's one reason why I love eating with the seasons. Your body doesn't have to take such a drastic, like, shutdown from what it's used to. It's just like, oh, I'm going to just be here for a little bit. Get what I need to get, and then I'm moving on. And so the craving was so intense. And... um so she walks outside one day. We, you know, I think we were just passing, taking the kids to school or something. I'm like, hey, girl, what's up? She's like, hey. She's like, hey, if you want to come over later, I'm cooking out on the grill. Oh, my God, I've been craving steak like crazy. And the inner soul in me, the inner witch bitch was like, you bitch, you're trying to sabotage my veganism. It's you. You're the reason that I was about to go buy A1 sauce and just dip my spoon in it just to get the, the, the thing in my head that I had steak. Just to make me think I had steak. I was going crazy. I mean, if you are vegan and you have a meat craving, you know how irritating that is. It's like, oh my God, please stop. I don't want to eat it. So I'm like, seriously? No, it can't be. But I'm like, yeah, this is what it is. And it was just like so annoying that being an empath was this intense. And there was nothing like a lot of the things that I read online, although they let you know that you're very sensitive and you pick up energies, it, it, it is like a level one of what really happens. And being an empath in a relationship is even more, oh my God. If you're an empath and you are in a relationship, I freaking feel for you. Because I can do it, okay? No. Yeah. Can do it. I was going insane. It was like, I don't want to know everything you feel. I don't want to know everything that you know. Unless I'm doing a reading on you, I'm not trying to tap into you. But see, that's the thing. When you're an empath, you are always reading somebody's energy. You can't help it. And you're not... You're not imposing on their energy because I'm, I am I practice ethics. I do not read people. I have some people that will be like, oh, I, I pulled some cards on you and these are what I came up with. I didn't ask you to pull that shit. Don't do it. I don't, I don't play when it comes to that. I do not impose myself in other people's energy unless I am given permission. That is one thing. If you've ever gotten a reading from me and I send you your reading prep sheet, I specifically say in there to give me permission to read you because my ass is not about to do it unless you give me permission. And a lot of y'all need to start practicing that ethics stuff, okay? I have some people that will, Ronnie, you just popped in my mind. That is perfectly fine. But if you sit down and you take time to light your ass a candle and try to tap into me, honey, you better be careful because I protect myself in a way you don't want something to snap your ass back. That I just want to throw that in there for all y'all that just like, oh, well, let me see what this person's going through. Don't do that. Practice ethics. Do not do that. Okay. I just had to throw that in there in the midst of this. But anyway, um, as an empath, you're always picking up on people's energy. You don't want to. You, you shouldn't have to. You, you like, it's, it can be annoying. But if you're around anyone, you will pick up on their stuff. And you know, one very annoying thing about being an empath is you could be 
so in your lane you could be this let me just use this as an example you could be a vegan you could be like a really strong devout vegan like I don't even I don't wear nothing but cotton vegan like I don't even like pictures of animals on my wall vegan because they look like they had to be staged there and they were uncomfortable like you could be a diehard vegan and when you get around other people that are meat eaters you actually will feel like oh I want to eat some meat well it's not that bad oh little cow you'll be okay let me just slaughter you for a little bit like if you are an empath you get what I'm saying if you are a highly sensitive person you can override that shit but as an empath you have to be mindful of the changes that are going on with you when you're interacting with other people because in a second you can be like a chameleon and totally lose sight of who you are and that is dangerous because it's like somebody else almost has control not that they're intentionally doing that but if they have strong energy, you will succumb to their energy. And so when you are an empath, you're always working at building your energy up. And sometimes it's so, um, it's so annoying. It's so challenging. It can be so like, oh, taxing. Like I have to do this again. It's like a job. That, that is one of the reasons we like to be in isolation. Because we don't have to sit there and say every time we hang up with our friends, I now disconnect myself from her energy. I now disconnect myself from his energy. Let me sage my aura. Let me go take a bath and some salt for the fifth time today because I talked to five people today. Like, nobody tells you how intense it is. And I also wanted to make this video because, like I said, there are a lot of people that think they are empaths and they are highly sensitive people. I don't want to say just highly sensitive people because you are still very sensitive. But empath is on a different level. Um, an empath's isolation is like their medication. If you are suffering from an illness and you absolutely have to have your medication, isolation to an empath is that. You will struggle, you will be at pain by the end of the day if you are not grounding yourself in quietness and isolation to some point. I mean, even my children, when they come home from school, I could be doing anything and I might be not aware of the time if I don't have my alarm near me. I'll just be caught up in doing work and my I could feel it all of a sudden I'll get really tired like my energy's being pulled and I actually I know for a fact it's my children thinking of me like oh I'm about to come home or mommy's about to come get me because as soon as they get home I just get super super freaking sleepy and thank God their dad is like I got you I'll do homework because it's like I have to get my energy together um, which going back to being an empath and being in a relationship, you know what? I need to make a video on that. Just that being an empath in a relationship. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay. Because that is a challenge. And I know a lot of your relationships are struggling because of your empathic abilities. Um, also for those of you that are really trying really hard to read people, if you are doing readings and you feel like you're not doing a good job or you're having a hard time tapping in, if you are an empath, there's no need to tap into nowhere. All you have to do is sit down next to that person and close your eyes and read what you're feeling inside. Because in, as an empath, you've already picked up and absorbed their energy. That's all you got to do. Just sit down next to them and feel you. Stop trying to focus on them. Focus on you because you already gained everything that they have. Um, so when you're doing readings and stuff for an empath, it's super simple. It's super easy. And, you know, I used to watch that show, um, Ghost Whisper, which is like my favorite freaking show. And James Van Prague had, was the writer for that show. Um, writer creator but I know he was the writer um and this was based off of you know his life and when they talked about the empath they would always say okay to her your son is an empath he is um his his abilities are greater than yours as a psychic medium and I never really understood that because I was just like we're empaths woo <laughs> how <laughs> until I just kept living and when you were aware that you are an empath 
the more aware you become and the more time that you take going in and working on yourself, you start to see like, oh my God, half of this shit that I am enduring and that I'm suffering from is not mine. Yes, I can learn from it and I may have manifested these connections with people, but this isn't all me. And it's to the point that I actually have to be careful talking to people. Um, that's why I like doing readings compared to just having regular conversations because when I do readings, I have my opening and closing process. And I don't want to have to do that every time I talk to somebody. But when just a regular friend is calling me, and, and it's a shame. Here's the downside of being an empath. We have friends. We have loved ones. And the sucky part about it is... If they are going through something, all we can do is try to like uplift them. We always want to be that one that's like, oh, well, here's here's what you can do. And it's not that we always want to fix you. It's just that we can't keep dealing with you if you want to stay on a low vibration. And it kind of sucks because we all get on a low vibration and we all go through stuff. But people do not realize how challenging and painful it is to be an empath they, they just don't understand it unless they literally are empaths because you will have friends and if my friends are going through something I try to help them out of it like I need to try to help them out of it I want you to actually feel better but I actually also want to stop feeling like shit too every time I talk to you okay so let's team up and fight this shit but what I can't do and if you haven't known me by now, what I won't do is talk to you every day when you are playing victim. I can't do that. It drains me. And I have children, a business, a head, a life, and passions to run. So I can't be that fixer to everyone. And I know that you all feel that you impasse, you feel the same way. Because people are drawn to communicating with us. That healing energy that we give off, those abilities that we have to be empathetic and to show people compassion and nurturing, People are attracted to that like a freaking magnet. And that is beautiful. And I love having the ability, no doubt. But we also need a break because not only will an empath, uh, you know, absorb your energy and feel as though they're going through, but when, when we absorb your energy and those emotions are triggered as though they are our own, our vibrations lower depending on like if you're depressed and I've talked to you all day guess what dude I'm hanging up the phone with you and I'm feeling kind of depressed too and so hanging up with you I have to go through a whole procedure to raise my vibration so we have to be isolated we can't communicate with people all day every day 24 7 that's why we love being around uplifted people people with high vibrations and that sucks because a lot of our family members and friends are like, I mean, why aren't you talking to me? And you didn't answer your phone. I called you like 15 times. I, if I focus on you right now, I can't focus on me. If I focus, if I talk to you right now, I have to do this whole production to clear your energy. And like I said, y'all might think I'm being dramatic, but if you are an empath, you know that I'm being 100 your sensitivity levels are so sensitive that I guarantee that all of you don't even know how sensitive you are. Like, you're not even aware exactly how deep it goes. Everything that you are around is going to affect you. And the other side of it is when we are affected, it, 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 it can lower our vibration. It, it affects us emotionally. You know, we have to be mindful and you know, bring ourselves out of that. But if we don't, that fit that emotional and spiritual effect from being attached to somebody that is going through something really low vibrational. If we don't get rid of that, and let's say, let's say your best friend is depressed and you talk to him or her every day, you have no idea that you are actually suffering some sort of depression based off of just their your communication with them. And every day, I don't care how much you say, I'm going to disconnect myself from this person's energy. There's going to be some times that you're going to forget to do that. And what happens to us is our bodies will actually start to feel physical pain. Um, your body will start to feel weaker. You'll start to lose a lot of energy. And this is another reason why as an empath, it is very, very highly important that you take care of your physical shell. 
working out, swimming, yoga, Pilates, eating healthy, your shell is vitally important. Like, because of the energies that you absorb and you think about it as an empath, we're always absorbing, absorbing, absorbing and releasing and releasing and releasing. And that is constant energy coming through. As a vessel having constant energy coming through, trust and believe me, it is wearing you down. That's why I absolutely hate when people are like, well, um, why can't you do this? Why didn't you answer when I did this? Why do you do this? You know, when you're like, why do you charge for readings and blah, 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 blah. Like, I hate when people are that, I feel like ding dong dumb, but evidently, duh, Ronnie, they don't know. They're not an impasse. They have no idea what you go through. I know what y'all are going through. To my impasse out there, I 100% get it. And that is why I, like, that's the dark side of being an empath. There is a beautiful side to it. But I understand you and I wanted to make this video because I want you to know you're not freaking alone. You're not going crazy. This is really the life that we were given. And there's like nothing we can do about it. And I don't really think even with the dark side that I would ever want to change it. Because the beauty of connecting with people brings me to tears. I just like to um, control that connection. I'd like to be able to say, you know, I I went out to the mall today and because it always happens, I'll be in the dressing room. Somebody's in there, I can feel their energy and I immediately will say something nice to them. We end up getting into a conversation and it just happened. Like they'll tell me, they're like, oh my God, I feel so much better ever since I talked to you. Girl, good. You have a good day. You look good in that dress. You know, it happens all for every time I freaking leave the house. But I love that shit. Because they feel better and I feel better that I have a purpose and that there is something that I'm wired a certain way that just showing compassion to someone has a major effect to them. So I love to be out and about and have that interaction. But when I come home, I'm not always in the mood to answer the phone to people that are within my you know, immediate family and immediate circle that are going through stuff, especially if it's constant. You go through stuff here and there. I got your back. All my family and friends can tell you, Ronnie can get vicious when it comes to having my family and friends back. I got, I am completely, I got your back. But if you like to play the victim, you will see me disappear from your life. And there are people out there that can tell you. She was really cool. She was my really good friend. Then all of a sudden she stopped answering the phone. Check yourself, honey. Boo boo. Okay. Because evidently. You were playing the victim a lot, and I can't do it. I physically, mentally, and spiritually cannot stay connected to somebody that likes to be the victim for too long. I can't. And it's no shame to the person, you know, and this is not just, I'm not just talking about me. I'm, I always use me as an example because I'm speaking, but I'm speaking to y'all. You know, like, you can't afford to do that. You want to help everybody, but guess what? We can't help everybody. That's why there's millions of us. That's why there's a lot of empaths, because there are many of us to help others. We ourselves, one empath cannot save the whole universe by ourselves. That is why there are many more of us. That is why we need to stay connected and support each other. And that is why we have to continue raising our vibrations and dealing with our inner shit. Because we have the, I feel like, mission to help people. In every light worker, spiritual being, I don't even want to just like sum it up like, oh, light worker. Every person has a mission. Your soul is here for a reason. Just find what it is that you do and do it. But balance is the key to everything. Even as being an empath, balance is the key to everything. If you've done a few readings for the day and talked to a few people out and about in the world and you've done enough for the day, you need to know when to say enough. I cannot answer my phone because I have to reserve me. I have to preserve me, preserve me. I have to preserve my own energy or I can't live, I can't thrive. And I, I want to give a shout out to all of you that are loved ones and friends to empaths because we are a challenge, no doubt. And I know for the people in my life, I absolutely love you. I feel sorry for you that you have to endure my sensitivities. But just like all of you empaths out there, 
we give a lot. We give a lot. So I think it kind of, it, it balanced itself out. I know our family and loved ones are like, okay, you know what? I do not have you and your sensitivities to deal with today. But they know deep down, but you're always the one that they call. You're always the one that has the big heart that's always willing to stop, drop, and roll to help somebody out. Um, today was a challenge to get to this video. Um, let me see, is my battery dying now? Okay. So today was a challenge to get to this video because um, prayers and healing energy please you all to Vegas. There is always something going on in every part of the world, and I can't keep up with everything. So, you know, sometimes you guys are like, oh, Ronnie, don't forget about this place and that place. Dude, I turned on the news and seen Vegas, and I bawled, and I cried, and I even yelled at God and said, I'm going to need you to come now. Like, I need you to help us. I need you to save us. This is, I cried. I cannot watch a news clip and see people in pain. It shatters my soul. It might be why I'm, I'm, I'm in all black today. I just couldn't find the energy to wear anything pink, yellow, or purple. I'm mourning. Okay. Um, it was just way too... Oh. <sighs> just the hearing. The, the Just every... It was just too much. I cried and I don't even know how I did get the energy to make a video today. So if my energy is everywhere or on 10, I'm not going to apologize for it because here's, here's me being an empath. I'm emotional. I'm sensitive. I just hate it. I absolutely hate seeing this anger, this evil, and this hate that is out here trying to destroy every piece of hopeful spirit and joy that we have within us. I absolutely freaking hate it. I don't have the patience or tolerance for it. I don't even, I, I see it out when I'm watching the news. I see it all the time in the media and I don't have the patience for it. I don't even have the patience in my personal life. If you are negative and that is just your vibe or if you, I, I just don't do it. I will cut you the hell off in a heartbeat because right now there's way too much stuff going on in the world for me to say yes to anybody's negative bullshit around me, family, friends, whatever. I had to um, delete a comment because um, yesterday from YouTube, I'll, I read my comments and as a matter of fact, today I'm going to reply to um, you guys, but I had to delete a comment because somebody said something negative to somebody else in the, um, that was leaving comments. And I was just like, who the hell are you to come up on my shit and speak to my subscriber like that? Like who, who takes the time out of their day to say, oh my God, let me get on YouTube and say some negative shit. So in my head, there is something mentally wrong with that. And I won't accept it. I don't even know why people on YouTube allow negative comments. I, I don't think they check their comments. I guess they just feel like, screw it. Let it be there. I'm getting what I got to get from it. But I, mm -mm. trust me, subscribers, I got your back. So I deleted her real quick, okay? We ain't having that on my thread, boo-boo. Like I said, there's too much negativity out there right here. We're going to be centered on healing and support and love. And that is why I built this YouTube channel. For so many reasons why I built this YouTube channel. That is one thing that I always want to remain as a foundation for this channel. You can go be negative somewhere else. Good. Um, so anyway, that is today's video. <sighs> let's pray for Vegas, please. Um, let's keep those victims and the families that have to endure losing their loved ones in our prayers that is just absolutely the worst and um the more for those of you developing your gifts you know the more people that we keep losing the more spirits that we gain and don't forget they are seeking help so stay prayed up get yourself grounded um I gave you the dark side of being an empath, but I will say, you know, we talked about the bright side of it. And one of my favorite tricks is to say I disconnect myself from this person's energy. When I come home, I say I disconnect myself from everyone's energy at this moment. And you let your um, friends know that don't be tapping into my energy because I don't know what you're bringing. I don't know what's going to connect 
to me from where you're at. You know what I mean? Because I have a group of psychic friends, and thank God, all minds are like really they're highly respectable when it comes to that. So good, but um, I had to put some people in their place. So. Um, because you got to really be careful about the energy. Somebody's tapping into you without your permission. That's pulling your energy. And without knowing it, because this is how deep being an empath is, without knowing it, you're just going along your day, eating your little toast, drinking your coffee, and all of a sudden, you're feeling a little depressed. You're feeling a little down. You don't know where that shit came from. That's because somebody else is tapping into your stuff. That's a no new. Y'all better protect yourself right now. Get in prayer. And set something that no one can step into this space without my permission. Okay? Um, be careful who you have around you. This is important. This is not necessarily like um, you can't really be like, oh, I can't help it. This is your life. That's why I said being an empath sometimes feels like a curse or a, um, a uh, what did I say it was called? A disability? Something like that? Handicap? Because um, it's intense, you know, I, I hate to even use that word. I, if you're not an empath, you might think I'm being dramatic, but um, it's really intense, you know, being around somebody even with physical pain and picking it up. And like I said, not all day are you like, I'm an empath at 801, what's happening? At 802, I'm an empath, what's happening? You don't do that. You go out and about and enjoy your day. So you're always picking up stuff and you're not really mindful of it. And that, by the time you get home, your body's hurting, your mind's everywhere. You just feel like, ugh, weighed down. So um, don't forget to disconnect yourself from people. And when you go into public spaces, put your little bubble up. We got to do all this weird shit, okay? Put your little bubble up, protect yourself, and be mindful of the people that you have in your circle, including yourself. Sometimes I'm just too bitchy for me, and I got to tell myself, <laughs> you better get it together. So, um, including yourself, be mindful of who's in your space, who's calling you. You know, I got a little trick. I'm going to give you all this and then I'm going to like cut it out. I have a trick for my cell phone. I, I give everyone the names of the energy that they carry. Sometimes I'd be like, ooh, I hope I'm not physically with this person. Then they try to like call me or their phone accidentally calls me and they look at my phone like, eh, this is what you really think of me. No, it's like I give the because it helps me. Here we are again being an empath and it's very extreme. It helps me sometimes to look at my phone when it's ringing and it says energy drainer because every time I talk to this person, they drain my energy. Um, energy lifter. Oh, let me say yes to that phone call. Um, gossiper. Mm, nope. Pay attention to how your energy shifts when you talk to people. And then go into your phone and give them the name that their energy carries. Because if they're not adding to you, they're taking from you. Okay? Now, again, people will go through shit. It is our job as friends and loved ones to help people go through stuff. To lift each other up. Not to be in the funk. But if somebody wants to always go through shit, you need to write it down. She will play the victim and drain your energy. Do you want to answer? Hell no. That's why I don't let nobody touch my phone. Because if you really knew what your name was under. But I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. Because most of the people now is like, she has good energy. Answer the phone. She makes you laugh. Answer the phone. I like that. The little gossiper, the energy drainers, they don't get answered. Sorry, guys. Sorry I had to put it out there on YouTube. Try to tell you. So, I um, totally love you all. And, uh, yeah, I'm channeling Minor Witch today. I am also mourning for those that were affected in Vegas. I, I absolutely had a breakdown watching the news clip. So again, prayers, you guys, please, if you're watching this video, just say one quick prayer. And if you're watching this video some point past the future of October 2nd, 2017, then I'm sure there's something going on in the world that you could just drop a quick prayer to. So please do that, okay? Prayer works. And it's energy and it's being sent where you are focused on. So focus on those families that are having to deal with losing their loved ones because they definitely could use some mercy and some strength and some compassion right about now. I love you guys and I will see you later. And also, I want to let you know if you have not yet subscribed to my newsletter on my website, 
then you need to do so now because I'm about to run my fall special and all of my services are going to go on sale because you guys know I like to, you know, I love doing that. And I haven't done it in a while. So I've been so busy. So I'm about to do a big fall spell, Halloween spell. That's a spell? Sale. Hmm. Hmm. I need to do a fall spell. Don't forget, October 5th, full moon. Uh -uh, it's the hunter's moon. This is a big one. So get stuff together, you guys. But um, yes, subscribe to my newsletter at www.rlhealingstudio.com. You will get an alert about my sale and all readings will be like damn near free. Well, I don't know about free. But you can. I'm going to look out for you again. All right, y'all. I got to go. I got to go eat a cookie or something. I need to smile. See you guys later. Bye.